In early 1945, U.S. forces focused their attention on an imposing objective, Okinawa. Lying only 350 miles from Japan proper, Okinawa would make the perfect base from which to launch the proposed invasion of Japan itself. But though the Japanese were losing more and more outlying territory, on the home islands, the Japanese military forces would be able to muster sufficient manpower to fight a strong defensive battle. In early 1945, President Roosevelt returned from Yalta and reported on the most significant developments of that important conference with Great Britain and Russia. We haven't won the wars yet, with an S on wars. It's a long, tough road to Tokyo. It's longer to go to Tokyo than it is to Berlin in every sense of the word. The defeat of Germany will not mean the end of the war against Japan. On the contrary, we must be prepared for a long and costly struggle in the Pacific. But the unconditional surrender of Japan is as essential as the defeat of Germany. In the far Pacific, three divisions of U.S. Marines were engaged in wiping out the enemy on a small strategic volcanic island named Iwo Jima. Japan still managed to supply its troops on the Asiatic mainland, where the Emperor's forces were firmly entrenched. If Okinawa were taken by the U.S., Japan's supply line to those forces would be effectively severed. In March 1945, at Ulithi in the Carolyn Group, the U.S. Navy amassed an amphibious force of unprecedented proportions. That force moved north directed by one of the Navy's top amphibious fleet commanders, Vice Admiral Richmond Kelly Turner. Carrier planes of Admiral Spruance's 5th Fleet hit the home islands of Japan and then softened up the target island of Okinawa. Meanwhile, the warships of the mighty 5th Fleet moved toward the objective. And on March 25th, enemy positions on the island came under attack by a score of U.S. warships, which fired salvo after salvo. On March 26th, 77th Division GIs assaulted the Karama Islands, a valuable subsidiary base of operations. And on April 1st, the key island of Okinawa was invaded. U.S. 10th Army, which was composed of GIs of the Army's 24th Corps and Marines of the 3rd Amphibious Corps. 16,000 men were in the first wave to land on Japan's doorstep on the western coast of Okinawa. It seemed hard to believe, but there was no opposition. Most of the veterans in the invasion force, old campaigners who had fought at Saipan, Peleliu, and Leyte, suspected that this was an April Fool's Day trick on the enemy's part. The soldiers and Marines pushed across the island and were followed by thousands more. The men advanced quickly across the neck of the island toward the east coast against very light resistance. Only scattered enemy troops fired on the invaders. U.S. troops gained ground easily. 
The American plan was to bisect the island and thus divide the enemy's forces. During those first few days on Okinawa, U.S. soldiers and Marines encountered only feeble resistance. It was difficult for the men to understand. Only in the advance across the island's neck, the American fighting men did meet some enemy patrols, but no opposition strong enough to impede the 10th Army's progress. The island was cut in two by April 4th, when U.S. troops reached the east coast. During the next three days, a considerable amount of territory was seized in the northern section. The beachhead was firmly established, and supplies were being brought ashore in impressive quantities. To keep the men of the 10th Army fed and equipped put a heavy burden on the Navy, which employed more than a thousand ships of all types during the Okinawa campaign. At sea, the men of the vast fleet standing off the island were growing concerned about the enemy's heavy air attacks. Off Okinawa, the Japanese made maximum use of their frenzied kamikaze attack plan. heavy losses as further waves of suicide planes dove into U.S. ships. off Okinawa became as violent a battleground as the island itself. At airfields on Kyushu, southernmost island of Japan proper, more and more hastily trained pilots were inducted into kamikaze service. No honor was considered greater than the privilege of making a suicide dive against an American ship. Fortunately, not all the kamikaze missions were successful. To the men in the fleet, the skies seemed always full of kamikaze. between Okinawa and the Japanese home islands, some U.S. ships were hit in enemy bombing attacks. On the U.S. carrier Franklin, casualties were very heavy. In the struggle to save the ship, Chaplain Joseph O'Callaghan of Cambridge, Massachusetts played a memorable part and was subsequently awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. It appeared that most of the crew were dead and of the living, Almost everyone was wounded. The few survivors of Franklin will never forget that cold March morning in the far Pacific. The flight deck littered with dead and dying. And now many pastors, a speedy, a spirited Frank D. Amen. More than 250 U.S. ships of all types were sunk or damaged by the enemy's air attacks in the Okinawa operation. On April 12, 1945, U.S. fighting forces lost their commander-in-chief. While a sorrowing nation mourned his passing, a new chief executive took the oath of office. President Harry Truman was well aware of his heavy responsibilities as America's war leader. In Washington, the nation's grief was mirrored in the faces of the crowds which lined the route of the procession.
Halfway around the world on Okinawa, many of the combat troops paused to attend a memorial service not far from the front. President Roosevelt's death at this critical point was a real blow to the servicemen, who had felt a close bond with their late commander-in-chief. Some officers worried about a drop in morale, but most of the men resolved to fight with even greater determination to help achieve the final victory as quickly as possible. On Okinawa, the battle was far from won. Cleaning out the long section of the island north of the beachhead was the job of the 6th Marine Division. They moved quickly against an enemy force which was fighting from ideal natural defensive positions. On Motobu Peninsula, the Marines ran into sudden stiff resistance near Mount Yaitaki. The enemy pocket was wiped out during a three-day fight by the veterans of Eniwetok and Guam. The men moved forward quickly and cleaned out the peninsula where most of the enemy's northern force on Okinawa was concentrated. In the 13-day campaign on Motobu, 2014 enemy soldiers met death. The Marines mopped up the rugged northern area of Okinawa against sporadic resistance. but a handful of the thousands of Japanese were killed by the 6th Marine Division in taking the northern section of the island. On April 20th, the Marines of the 6th Division secured the northern section of Okinawa. In a quick amphibious operation, 77th Division GI seized Ieshima, where the foot soldier's great friend and supporter Ernie Pyle met his death. On southern Okinawa, General Simon Bolivar Buckner, 10th Army commander, ran up against the enemy's main line of defense. Artillery, supported by tanks, went to work on the enemy's defensive line. In early May, the Army's 24th Corps, stalled on the Southern Front, was reinforced by the Marines of the 3rd Amphibious Corps. The battle-wise enemy commander, General Ushijima, had chosen to make his stand along a line which stretched across the island from Naha to Yonabaru. On May 8th, the 6th Division Marines prepared to attack south along the west coast in the drive to take Naha and pierce the enemy's line. To cut that western anchor of the enemy's defense, the Marines concentrated all their power in the new offensive. remained a stalemate, partly attributable to the heavy rains which turned the countryside into a morass of mud. Most of the heavy equipment became hopelessly bogged down in the mire. The Army 24th Corps, which was trying to mount a crushing offensive against the bulk of the enemy's Okinawa force, found its assignment especially difficult with the beginning of Okinawa's celebrated plum rains, which set in on a daily basis late in May and greatly complicated the operation. The struggle to reduce the enemy's positions in the Naha area continued for several weeks. 
Dislodging the enemy from his carefully prepared defenses was a demanding assignment and a costly one. The Marines' answer to the enemy's strong, well-integrated defenses was the tank infantry team. In the U.S. attack, some tanks were lost, and the Marines suffered a sizable number of casualties before they were able to move into the capital city. campaign, the Marines completed the capture of Naha by May 28. The city was almost a total wreck. For their successful seizure of this hub of the enemy's defense on Okinawa, two regiments of the 6th Marine Division, the 22nd and 29th, were awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. The city had felt the full weight of U.S. firepower. The fall of the capital city signaled the beginning of the last major phase of the battle for Okinawa. With Naha in American possession, the offensive picked up speed all along the line. Three army and two marine divisions pressed the attack with renewed spirit from one coast of Okinawa to the other from the Pacific Ocean to the East China Sea. Marines of the 1st Division pierced the enemy salient at Shuri in the island's rugged interior. The U.S. forces suffered a considerable number of casualties in beating down the enemy's grim defense of southern Okinawa. The news from the European theater gave the men a lift. But on Okinawa, there was still a war to be fought. The seizure of the Yonabaru area by soldiers of the 24th Corps marked the collapse of the enemy's defense line on Okinawa's east coast. Across the island, 6th Division Marines encountered stiff resistance on Oroku Peninsula. fight for Oroko Peninsula, the enemy suffered some 5,000 casualties. The Marines worked hard to annihilate the enemy's last-ditch defense. With resistance eliminated on Oroko Peninsula, the 6th Marine Division controlled the entire Naha area. For this action, the 4th Marine Regiment was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation. In the capture of Oroku Peninsula, the U.S. forces gained control of Naha airfield, complete with dummy planes, which the enemy used to suggest a strong air base. With the airfield no longer in enemy hands, U.S. forces could finally make use of the port of Naha. By mid-June, U.S. troops had completely broken the enemy's main line of defense on Okinawa. On June 17th, U.S. forces were only a few miles from the southern tip of the island. Once the main defense of Okinawa had been fought, to no avail, the Japanese soldiers began to give themselves up more readily. The combat efficiency of the remaining Japanese units was cut down by the heavy casualties the defenders of Okinawa were sustaining. The advancing American troops also brought a number of civilians to safety. 
Some of the Okinawans had holed out in any place of refuge available. Some had stayed hidden for weeks. Many had had no food or water for some time. The Okinawans had been led to expect far different treatment than they actually received at the hands of the American troops. As the 83-day battle for Okinawa neared its end, thousands of inhabitants of that hilly island gave themselves up. For the Okinawans, the war was at an end. The natives now saw Japanese claims of victory after victory in their true light. On Okinawa, some 196,000 of the island's population were herded into internment camp areas to keep them out of the path of the final U.S. offensive. Even under these hectic conditions, an attempt was made to keep members of a family from being separated. The prisoner of war camps were crowded with the largest concentration of Japanese troops ever taken prisoner in any campaign during World War II in the Pacific. In the closing days of the battle, the enemy soldiers had finally refused to obey their officers, had surrendered themselves to their conquerors. The code of Bushido, death before surrender, was no longer followed without question by Japanese fighting men. At the Southern Front, 10th Army Commander General Buckner had final victory in his grasp when his life was cut short by an enemy shell. Meanwhile, the drive for the last piece of enemy territory on Okinawa was underway. New weapon, the recoilless rifle, was used for the first time in combat during the campaign's final days. On June 22, 1945, the last enemy unit was overwhelmed. American fighting men controlled Okinawa to the extreme southern tip. The enemy had lost an invaluable base only 350 miles from Japan proper. And the United States had gained still another island, again after paying a heavy price. General Buckner was the only field army commander to lose his life by enemy action in the Asiatic Pacific Theater during World War II. and thousands of men in his command also gave their lives on Okinawa. The battle for this strategically important island near Japan proved a most costly one for both warring nations. The loss of the machines and weapons of war was also seriously felt by both sides. The heavy destruction of aircraft was another crippling blow, particularly to the Japanese. Top U.S. commanders like Admiral Nimitz remained firm in their determination to carry the fight to Japan itself. American forces fighting in the Pacific have brought the war to the home islands of Japan. We have sunk the larger part of the Japanese fleet, and in the next few months, we will exploit every opportunity to finish that particular job. Army and Navy aircraft bombed large areas of Japan's principal cities into rubble. And unless Japan surrenders soon, we intend to complete that destruction. Yeah. 